And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Between Rounds here on the Punch Birth Fit Boxing Channel with myself, Jamie Bourne. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Coach Malachi Williams from New Media Today USA. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good, doing good, Jamie, man. Really good, man. Shout out to everybody in the audience, man. Um, you know, really love, you know, I really love over here Punch Perfect Boxing. So um, shout out to everybody. I'm doing very well. Thanks for thanks for joining me. If you guys want to go check out Coach, I'll leave all the links down below. And uh, yeah, live stream every single day. Uh, for most of my UK listeners, it's 8 p.m. over here, um, and yeah. then obviously your respective times over in the US. So, going to get into some boxing talk today, and obviously still fresh in the mind, uh, your favourite fighter, Terence Crawford, getting yeah. the victory over Sean Porter. Just firstly, obviously I've tuned into your live, so I know your reactions, but for my yeah. listeners, kind of, what did you make of the fight? Um, the fight, um, honestly, I thought the fight was, um, I thought it was close. At, at one point in time, I did have Sean Porter up, you know, even though Crawford is my favourite fighter, but I try to be as objective as possible. Um, he didn't look as sharp to me. Um, Sean Porter kind of looked like, like especially, especially like the first half of the fight, it seemed like Sean Porter was able to do pretty much what he wanted and Crawford was still trying to make the adjustments. Um, everyone knew how Sean was going to come out. He fights the exact same way 99% of the time. So, um, But as the second half started to kick, kick in, I started seeing the tide start to change. He was getting caught with clean shot. Every time he lunged in, I'm like, okay, Crawford is, you know, once he gets his distance. Both fighters haven't fought in it. I think Crawford haven't fought since last year, since yeah. um, no November. So it's been a year since the Kell Brook fight. And then Porter, it's been over a year. So both of them look kind of rusty to me. They didn't look as sharp like a Canelo Alvarez, how he would normally look because he fights all the time. So, but yeah, um, without taking all the emotion out of it, yeah, I think it, and um, it it turned out kind of like the way I thought it was going to be. I predicted a tenth or eleventh round stoppage. All right, and I brought and I had a receipt. I broke it down saying he's going to catch him lunging in, and lo and behold, that's what he did. So, yeah, I thought that um, kind of up to six rounds. I thought you could have kind of had it even or had Porter just ahead. And then I thought from the sixth round, and I've watched it back since. I thought right. Crawford really adjusted and started to take hold and. When that kind of clip of him between round nine and ten where he said to his corner, can I go and get him? Can I go after him? Yeah. I think they started to see what you just said in Porter, that he was starting to f sort of come in a little bit more and more. He looked a yeah. bit more laboursome than what he was doing. And then obviously we get to the tenth round. It arrives at, at what you predicted. You got your prediction spot on. It arrived at the point where he got stopped. What was your kind of reaction to the, to the stoppage? Did you agree with it? Yeah, no, I didn't agree with the stoppage. I, I think that... They, they had like a minute and a half left in the in the round, I think, maybe a little bit more. Um, uh, Porter was going to get Porter. He was going to finish that guy. I can, you know, we don't see. We both seen a lot of uh, Crawford fights, so it's like a Canelo. I'm not. He's. I'm not saying he's on Canelo's level, but it's like when Canelo gets you hurt, you out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, he Sean was going to get dropped again. <laughs> he's going to get dropped again. Um, you you know, so I think he should have just let him continue to fight. If he would have got knocked down again, then you stop the fight. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't have had a problem with that. But I think Sean deserved to at least uh, see could he finish the round out. You know, that, that's what I think. Yeah, I didn't, we, I didn't agree with the stoppage. I didn't agree we, with the stoppage. We saw a reaction out of Porter. So that was the thing for me. Like, although he looked hurt, you know, punching the canvas and being frustrated is a sign that at least he's at least alert. And obviously his conditioning is so good that he does respond to things. But the thing that surprised me was when when it happened, I thought Kenny was was acting as a father rather than a coach. And I thought he probably was caring more for his son rather than someone that cares for their fighter. It might have been a different story. But then kind of afterwards, all the kind of nonsense he was coming out with and sort of putting Sean on blast a little bit in in interviews yeah. and in the ring afterwards and stuff like that. So it did change my perception a little bit. Sure, uh, Sean did go in the post-fight pressure and announce his retirement. And what an amazing career that kind of fought everyone and fought people at their peak as well. Fought Kel Brook at his best, fought Furman at his best, probably got Spence before the accidents and all the stuff that's happened to him as well. And, you know, Crawford still at sort of the height of his powers. So just a kind of word really on your thoughts of Sean Porter going out at the right time, really. Um, yeah, I think I think Sean did, right? I, 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 I think I have a show where I said, I think, Sean is going to retire anyways, more than likely. He don't fought everybody. He has nothing else to prove. Uh, Kel Brook kind of gave a blueprint, kind of, hey, this is how you beat this overly aggressive guy. Yes. When he comes rushing in, you have to be strong on the inside. 
And I noticed when when Crawford and um and Porter would engage and lock up, Porter was not able to throw Crawford around and muscle him like he was able to muscle Errol Spence. Crawford has crazy stuff. strength, doesn't he? Yeah. It's, like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like his wrestling background or just his un- it's kind of unnatural, really. Yeah, yeah. When Bud, when um, uh, when uh, when um, when they when they locked up, when they in- engaged, I noticed how how strong Crawford was, and and, and Porter couldn't really move him. And, I, and some of those, some of those, um, when they when they engaged, he pushed Sean Porter off of him, like okay, and pushed him, let him know, no, nah, it's not, it's not going to be like that. But to answer your question as it relates to the retirement, yeah, I think I think there's nothing else to do. I mean, you're not going to fight the younger guys, Boots Enos and Virgil Ortiz for what? And the, those guys. Are coming up, they're young. You don't need to fight them. There's no money in it for to fight them. You're not gonna make a dime um fighting them. You know what I mean? So really, so there's no need. Um and I think he did right. I think he's a he's gonna be a very good analysis, um, you know, a very good um analysis, a commentator, um, which he's already doing, and and that's it. I mean, I think he did right by retiring. He said if he would have won or or if it would have been a draw, he still would have retired. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, I think I think he um I'm, personally I think he's going to be a future Hall of Famer in my opinion. Personally. Yeah, I, th- I think he has to be for for all the people that he faced, like even outside of the guys that we speak about, the yeah. the Spence, the Furmans, the, the Porters, etc. You know, when we talk about even the the kind of a bit lower in like Devin Alexander, Brona, like he still had those guys as well. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. fought absolutely everybody. Um, we now turn the the conversation towards Terence Crawford and what comes next. I'm sure as a uh, as him being your favorite fighter. It, I mean, the clip, I keep watching it of him and Bob on stage. It yeah, makes yeah. me laugh every <laughs> single time when I watch it because you could tell Crawford has been wanting to do that and Bob looked too old and too tired to really respond to it. But as a Terence Crawford fan who felt like he's almost been held hostage a little bit yeah. and there's been things preventing him from having the fights we want to see, he's now free to do as he pleases. And I like that he admitted that he sees the Canelo br- blueprint, which is become yeah. your own manager and you can take things on a fight by fight basis. So, what do you think we'll see from Crawford moving forwards? I I, I have the receipts on this, Jamie. I spoke to Red, which was uh, Crawford's trainer, one of his yeah. trainers. So I knew six months ago that Crawford was leaving. This is it, because one of the reasons why he resigned with Top Rank because they paid him a lot of money. You know, yeah. he was getting he Crawford was getting paid more money guarantee than any welterweight in the welterweight division. We're not talking about back end money. I'm not talking about we're gonna pay you two million up front and then you got to get the rest on the back end if the pay per views do well. No, he was getting like four point five million dollars per fight, and he was promised the Pacquiao fight. He was promised the Errol Spence fight, and he didn't get it. So with all of these, what 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 made me upset was I knew what was going on, and I think a lot of people knew, but certain people who was pushing narratives. Because they didn't like this guy. They made it racial. They went to calling him all kind of different names. Um, and then knowing that this guy's under contract, when you're under contract with someone, that's nothing that you can do. Yeah. You know, well, he should have went off and said this and said that. Yeah, that sounds good coming from a YouTuber. But if you're working for someone or if you're on the contract, you know, and this person is responsible for getting the fights for you. You're yelling, cursing, going, doing, you know, going out on social media, saying all different kind of things about this promoter. You can, your ass can get thrown on the shelf. You don't fight as much. I mean, anything can happen. So fulfill a contract, and that's what he did. He's not a talker. He don't talk much, mm-hmm. and he's been wanting to do this. Now it's like, listen, I'm a free agent now. I do what I want to do, and I think any older fighter, because with the PBC, they, those guys have 360 deals. I, I, I'm going to do a show and I'm going to explain it to you behind the scenes what's going on over there at the PBC. But those guys are in con- are controlled over there. They can't do nothing. That's why you see Carl Al all the time. But now that Crawford is a free agent, I think he needs to fight um, on a fight-by-fight fight basis. He's earned that right like a Canelo. Now, no one is no one is Canelo. But I'm saying he's in that position yeah. within his lane to where he can say, you know what, man, listen, okay, I, if you want me to fight, I'll fight Spence. I need 10 million up front plus back in. It's going to be a one fight deal. And yeah, I'll come over here and I'll fight him. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of being a free agent, especially if you're a world class talent. If you're a world class talent, you know, yes, de- definitely do that. 
Yeah, uh, I'm really interested to see what he does do because I do think that the top rank route kind of felt like it would lead to like Josh Taylor, but for me it was something that I'm not I'm not overly keen on. I think it's a good fight. I do really rate Josh Taylor, but I think him and I like him versus Tiafimo Lopez a little bit more. I think it's more competitive. Yeah. I see Bud clear of of Josh Taylor. So now looking at the the possible opponents, I think now is the time that they just have to look at the Errol Spence fight because yeah. there is just less barriers than there's ever been. But just in terms of logistics and stuff, I know that um, UGAS obviously has some obligations to fulfil with the WBA in Stanionis and Buteyev. I know Spence, they talk about his mandatory coming up, but it doesn't seem like they're really enforcing it, so we don't really know. So I feel like now is the time that they have to jump on it. If not, I'm not sort of sure what route he goes down. I do think Keith Furman is sort of holding out and waiting to get Spence or Crawford. So maybe PBC, like you just said, where they... They give him a big guaranteed purse and say, come and fight on our platform for, you know, your PBC debut type of thing. Maybe Thurman gets explored. But to be honest, now is the time to make the Spence fight, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, If the PBC is smart, they are trying to make that. And, and, they, and right now they are trying to get Crawford to come over there, right? But Crawford is very, very bitter about how this whole situation went down, the yeah. politics of it. So, um, Errol Spence played a big part in that as well, you know, so uh, contrary to popular belief, because, you know, he has a, he has a cult like, cult like following that, you know, it's, you know, the, the, you know, I'll I call them, I'll call them the big fish ites. That's a new name I just came up with on your show. The big fish ites, you know, they, they, you know, they think this guy is just God and everything he does and <laughs> says is, you know, he's, he, he's Thanos and all of this crazy, you know, you know, I hate his fanboys. Um, but, you know, this is the fight to make, right? Crawford is in a way better position than Errol Spence because Errol Spence is owned by Al Heyman. He has to do what he has to do with his boss. Al Heyman tells him to do. Uh, Terrence Crawford does it. Um, he's a free agent like like Canelo Alvarez, so he's in a better position. He and Terrence Crawford is working with uh, the brothers out of the U out of um, um what's um, um MTK Global. Yep. He's working. He's working with one of the top guys who negotiated his contract for this, for this, um, um, uh, for this purse bid with uh, with uh, with Sean Porter. That was the guy who negotiated it. So he's with the guys at MTK Global. I'm not saying he's on the contract with the actual company, but I know for a fact he's with one of the one of the top guys at MTK yeah. Global, which is beautiful. Which is beautiful. And I was told this was going to happen, which is beautiful. I, I like MTK Global. They do a lot of good things for the for, for the fighters that they manage. And Crawford has his own promotional company, him and Bo Mack. So now he's in the driver's seat. Okay, yeah. if you want me to fight this guy, I have no problem with that. This is what we want. These are these are our terms. You know, you know, we're not no, we don't care nothing about the back end money. You know, uh, you know, we don't care nothing about none of that. Um, they have a PBC has a lot of turmoil going on over there right now. To be honest with you, they got a lot of turmoil going on right now, from what I'm hearing. So. But yeah, I think I think Crawford is in a really good position. I think any fighter that's thirty four years old like him or in their thirties like Canelo, your contract is up. You fight on a fight by fight basis, man. That's what I would do. And talk and to that, me about that, that, that. Listen, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's how they did it in the eighties. Uh, Marvin Hagler, uh, when he worked with Bob Arum, yeah. uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, they never had long term contracts with uh, top rank. They worked on a fight by fight basis, and that's what that's what they need to do. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Mm. Um, talk to me about that fight, Crawford versus Spence. It's the one that probably gets debated the most. I think most people view it as the best fight in boxing. Well away is the is the glamour division away from the heavyweights. The heavyweights has the, yeah. the big intrigue and it's always been the glamour division. But away from that, well away has long been the most competitive division for quite some time now. Those two guys are at the top of it, both unbeaten. There is a clear sort of dislike and rivalry there, and we need to see that fight. Just from your perspective, how does that go down if it happens? Um, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm going to be as, uh, as, uh, as objective as possible. Um, Errol Spence can give Crawford problems. Crawford is going to give Errol Spence a whole lot of problems. No one is going to walk through anybody in this fight. From what I see, Errol Spence is, is, is tall. He's link, He's he's, link, he's long. Um, <clears throat> but Crawford has a longer arm reach. He has 74 inch. That dude has some extremely long arms, bro, to be 5'8". Yeah. 74 inch arm reach. You have middleweights that have 74 inch arm reach. He has a 74 inch arm reach. 
his ability to be able to make adjustments is what is what gets me. Um, the advantages that I would give Crawford over Porter, I mean over Spence, is the footwork. He has better footwork. Spence is more of a methodical, flat-footed, come forward, work the body, volume punch type fighter, right? Um, that's what you're going to get from him. Um, and that's pretty much how he fights. He's relentless in his pursuit. And I think that his style, he, and Spence has a good jab, good jab. Um, he doesn't have the best defense in the world, um, but um, he gets hit. But Crawford gets hit as well. Yeah. And when people tell me that, yeah, man, well, he Crawford get hit, I say, yeah, um, it's boxing when you're fighting top notch fighters. Tyson Fury gets hit, <laughs> Anthony Joshua gets hit, Alexander Usyk gets hit. When you're fighting top fighters, you're going to get hit. There's no such thing as a boxer that doesn't pretty much get hit, unless you're like a Pernell Whitaker or somebody. That's that's crazy. You know, Pernell was on, on was something else, but outside of that, you're going to get hit when you're fighting top guys. You know, but what is your punch resistance like? How can you make adjustments? You know, how do you um, do you change the speed of your jab, stuff like that. That's that. That's that's truly a 50 50 fight between Spence and um, Crawford. And I'm, you know, even though even though I'll still would favor Crawford, but that's a truly a 50 50 fight to me. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. Yeah. I think closer to the time. I do. I've always felt Crawford just has the slight edge, in my opinion. I just feel like there's there's more kind of layers to Crawford that I feel he can bring out in that fight. So I won't get too into it, but yeah, I'm a, along the same lines as you.